Guys, welcome back to another episode of Decently Indecent. I am uh, so happy to have you here. We're going to be talking today about the Dr. Disrespect situation, going through some of the comments, some of the responses being made, some of the things being talked about online. It's a pretty, pretty big deal, I would say, in our industry, the industry I work in. Obviously, if you guys are watching this, the industry you partake in as a viewer or maybe you make content yourself. Um, it, and it's pretty wild. I, you know, and I've, I've just been watching, uh, as a little fly in the wall, obviously the last week or so is these, I would say the, you know, the, um, this whole thing is boiled over, which has been boiling for four years after his, the docs Twitch ban in 2020 and everyone being like, what the hell happened? It kind of went out of the public conscience for a while and then came roaring back this last week as these allegations finally came out. Now, first things first, as we like to do on this podcast, I'm going to start off by pouring a couple of fingers. I got the uh, JMO and the Globe decanter here. Just a little, for those of you, sometimes I get people asking in the comments, this is just a little, little classic Jameson, nothing fancy. Sometimes we go fancy in the carafe. And sometimes we just keep it straight Irish. I'll give you a little background too. If you're listening, uh, also if you're watching today, I'll be you know reading some tweets and watching some videos. Obviously, you can listen and understand the context. Um, or if you're experiencing it in video, we'll have those up on the screen. Listen, Doctor Dis- Doctor Disrespect uh, revolutionized streaming, in my opinion. He was the face of Twitch for several years until the ban, and he did on a production level what very few other people have ever done in the streaming space at the level he was able to push things um, to create entertaining content. Um, Obviously, he was playing a character and the way he behaved was in line with his name. (laughs) Uh, Disrespectful, didn't give a shit. And millions of people around the world enjoyed his content enjoy his content, whatever. Me being one of them, I always thought he was just, you know, as someone who admires the craft and, and likes to watch people push the envelope in the entertainment, in the online entertainment space, I was always very impressed with what he was able to do. I thought he was very entertaining. Um, obviously, you know, I, I never knew him personally, never spoke to him personally, but I know that he was an inspiration for a lot of people. He was looked up to by a lot of people, millions of people, kids, adults, fans, and so... You know, it's just been pretty crazy to see this thing, you know, this this castle that he's built just get fucking demolished in the course of a couple of days. And we're going to go through some of this evidence, some of the things that are being said, some of the things that he said, and chat about that because, quite frankly, I mean, he's 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 going to be lying in the bed that he made, from what I can tell, just in the in the short amount of time I've looked into this. I'm going to watch a couple of responses from other people like Doc's friends. He's obviously one of the biggest names in the space, so he's friends with a lot of these big guys. Ninja, uh, Nick Merckx being another big one, Nade Shot, all of these guys that have become close friends with him. And this is obviously, I don't want to, you know, tough on them. I'm not trying to act super empathetic towards it. For them specifically, I mean, it, it is what it is, but I do, you know, a lot of these guys, I think, are, are going through a bit of a mourning process because they're they're losing a friend in a way because you can't, from what I've seen so far the last couple of days, it's going to be tough to <laughs> stick up for this guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially after he came out and basically admitted to the accusations. Now, essentially, for those who don't know, he's 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 being uh, it is he's being accused of and since admitted to. Um, what boils down to inappropriate DMs with a minor, right? And this is a, this mother, like, listen, this motherfucker is 42 from what I understand. He, like, he is older than I am, which is in internet years is absolutely archaic. He might as well be a fucking fossil in a museum. Insane to do what he's done at his age, right? There's just no excuses for this type of behavior. And I'm going to get into my opinion of this more a little bit later, but first I want to just give you a quick rundown. Um, actually, you know what? No, first I'm gonna wa- I'm gonna watch this. Just watch this TikTok with me real quick. Bro, Jeff, I can't believe you did it. All your blood, your sweat, your tears, your hard work, the sleepless nights of grinding content creation, 
and you finally blew up. You're finally making a difference for your loved ones and, and those around you, man. How does that feel? Not gonna lie, I am deeply in love with kids. Is this nigga serious? <laughs> Oh, shit. So my buddy Jordan, who helps me get together content for the podcast sometimes, he, he was like, this is kind of unrelated, but the 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 overlay at the beginning of this was some content creators after they make it. And dude, I don't know what it is about it, and I and this it drives me fucking nuts because we've seen this with people like Shay Carl, um, uh, uh, Call Me Carson, mini lad like there's just so many cases of people finding unfathomable unfathomable ex, uh, success excuse me unfathomable success on the internet making millions of dollars supporting their family and they fucking ruin it all over some dumbass bullshit petty like little relationship either with some whore in the dm sometimes it's minor like whatever and and i can't i can't bring myself to understand the thought process that goes through these people's minds or the lack of thoughts that goes through their minds that allows them to put everything they have, all of these blessings, being in a position where you are the top 0.01% and you burn that shit to the ground over a fucking, over some inappropriate messages. <laughs> are you, are you okay? What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, how fucking stupid like it has to come back to you know like i'm not a psychologist but there has to be some underlying deeply deeply concerning uh self-confidence issues or something which a, a lot of times some of the people that are the best at building careers online are the type that are desperate at seeking validation and they get addicted to it and so it drives them and it enables them and creates this kind of feedback loop that allows them to continue reaching new heights in creating content and et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, these, these type B personalities that maybe just were introverted and didn't have this attention. So all of a sudden they have all this like love and admiration online and it gives them this new sense of confidence that they, it's like this unwieldy beast that they don't know how to control. So all of a sudden after they've built up this multi-million dollar empire and have all these people adoring them, they get one DM from some like, you know, e-girl that's 17 and they're like, oh, oh, oh. Oh God, I love you. The fuck is wrong with you? Makes no fucking sense, dude. I can't, I can't fathom it. I really can't. It just, I've, I'm, I'm running in circles in my mind to figure out like what, what fucking brain worm must you have to allow yourself to even entertain a conversation with a minor that gets inappropriate as a 40 year old man in charge of a multi-million dollar empire, one of the best in the scene to, to burn that all to the ground. Granted, he didn't have the best history. He cheated on his wife, uh, obviously. That is what it is. But uh, quick rundown for those of you that don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, I already said the doc, the doc was, you know, one of the most prolific in the industry, changed the industry, the face of streaming for many years in, in many respects. Drama emerged in 2020 when he uh, promptly got, essentially let go from Twitch. He was on, you know, he was up for some sort of renewal. There was going to be, or he had just signed, I think, a big deal. Lots, worth lots of money that was going to make him exclusive to Twitch for several years. And all of a sudden they were like, nope, see you later. Banned him from the site. Um, huge speculation because no real reason ever came out. Twitch never said it. Doc pretended at the time that he didn't understand why he was banned or he didn't know why. They weren't giving him a reason speculation was rampant. There was a handful of people, gaming journalists, that were insinuating that they had an idea what the what the reason was, but they never really said it. Crazy, huge news at the time. And no real reason ever surfaced or manifested, ever came out. You know, it was all like, oh, for legal reasons, I can't say. Doc ended up suing Twitch. I, I think he might have won the lawsuit, honestly. I don't even remember exactly at that time, but... You know, as things happen, you know, as these things do, people move on and all the, you know, a couple of weeks go by and then it's on to the next drama and people forgot about it. And Doc moved on to YouTube and had a very successful career on YouTube. And there was some weirdness around that where YouTube didn't offer him a contract and they weren't helping promote him. 
um, which I've seen news come out recently about why after these allegations of him like uh, sending graphic texts or whatever to this minor is this idea that people in the industry obviously communicate. And so people at Twitch told YouTube what happened or what was speculated to have happened. And it made them hesitant to want to sign a deal, but there was no, essentially, it's this type of thing where it's, it, it, it was this kind of gray area where it was obviously wildly inappropriate, but there was no kind of legal recourse. So as an official institution like Twitch or YouTube, I don't know, I guess for legal reasons, maybe you can't come out and accuse some of this certain thing if there was no technical legal breach. Uh, but you can obviously, you know, based on your own TOS, let people go if, if their behavior doesn't align with, uh, with your, with your, with your rules or with your ethos that was four years man so four years goes by and docs just kind of continues being a, a big streamer on youtube in march of 2020 doc announced the legal proceedings with over uh were over a settlement was reached and no wrongdoing was admitted by either party okay so that was i have yeah so i'm, I'm talking like i don't know it I, my boy jordan actually he gets this information for me to see so it's good um so they reach a settlement no wrongdoing admitted um that was two years ago. In just a week, just about a week ago, on June 21st, 2024, this is, you know, less than a week ago now at the time of recording, a former Twitch employee comes forward and says Doc was caught sexting a minor, and that was the reason for a ban. This little tweet obviously goes bananas, and this was kind of the, um, there's a good, there's a good uh, euphemism for this, but I can't think of what it is, but this was kind of the Either the straw that broke the camel's back, or the or the little the little slit that opened up the bag of worms. Yeah, it, this is the little tweet that opened up the bag of worms, and all of a sudden everything came out. Right, people are coming out. Told you so. This, that, and the other thing. We're gonna read a little tweet here from uh, Jake Lucky, who's obviously like one of these gaming scene drama reporters, and he says uh, a former Twitch employee came forward and stated the alleg the alleged reason for Doc's permanent Twitch ban was for sexting a minor in the previous Twitch Whispers product. That was another piece of it, is that Doc was using a, I think, what was at the time, a new product called Whispers, which was like Twitch's version of DM. I don't, maybe it was different than normal DMs. I'm not really sure. Or maybe this was the beginning of Twitch D DMs. Doc responded to Jake, says, Jake, seriously, I get it. It's a hot topic, but this has been settled. No wrongdoing was acknowledged, and they paid out the whole contract. So this is interesting because the first couple days, there was like this, you know, Doc was active in the responses. Like, yeah, there was no wrongdoing acknowledged or, you know, there was no illegal... There was no legal grounds for termination. So he ended up getting paid his contract after they let him go. And his old offense was that like there was nothing technically illegal that happened, but he never came out and was like, no, I wasn't inappropriately sexting a minor. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm 40. Of course not. He was just like, a settlement was reached, you know, a little sketch. And people were like, uh, not the best looking response if you're trying to defend yourself against these potential allegations. There was kind of this eeriness too, because Doc is continuing to stream. And, and similar to 2020, where there's this moment on stream when I think Doc gets a message on his phone, he looks at it, and then his, his demeanor completely changes. This happened in 2020 when he figured out, I think, what happened about Twitch finding out about this and that he was going to get let go. And he ends the stream. And this happened again recently. He's on stream, and I think he must have got a text message or seen a tweet that this elephant in the room that he had been streaming and running his business in the midst of had finally been out. And, and it's crazy to think now, like, you can't, you have to know as Doc over the last four years that eventually this is going to come out, right? So he spent the last four years, I can only imagine how many of his hairs have turned white. He has spent the last four years continuing to stream and carry this streaming empire and starting half whatever this name of his gaming studio is half to midnight whatever the fuck it is midnight society you know being a partner in that company you have to know that this is going to come out this is the way things happen like once something happens on the internet it is there forever and if there's proof of it happening obviously these dms somebody knows about it i don't care what legal proceedings take place you get your contract you get your money that's fine i don't care if they're is no real legal precedent for you to be legally charged with a crime. But anytime there's something that involves some shady shit with an adult 
being inappropriate with a child on the internet, especially when you're a dude in a, in a position of immense power online and influence, there is no fucking chance that is going to go away. Like it will haunt you for the rest of your life. And he is fully facing the music, as they say. So we're going to watch this little clip right now of Doc. You know how we run things. Uh, this is, uh, it says, you can see the exact moment Doc Disrespect appears to find out that Midnight Society is dropping him or some other seemingly bad news related to his Twitch ban allegations. He had just defeated Bale. The uh, he was playing through the new Elden Ring uh, DLC, which I just downloaded last night, by the way. Cannot fucking wait to play it. Anyways, let's listen to the dog. How we, you, you know how we run things here. <clears throat> Looking at his phone right now. You can see it. Visibly. Just, he's like sitting on this for four years, knowing probably in the back of his mind that eventually he would have to, he would have to face this day. Picks up the controller, runs in circles with his Elden Ring character for eight minutes, pulls up the mini map, like his brain is fried, he's gone, he's cooked. No way you can continue to stream after you. <laughs> you, you understand what's going on. So it's, it's kind of funny just to watch this moment of realization. Ah. Oh. And so that particular clip ends, but he goes on to give a little speech, um, which I watched as well. I don't even know if that's. <sighs> yeah, here we go. Well, let's just listen to this because this is. I think more importantly, we need to. This is right after the I think I, we just watched. When I say step away, I think, I mean, I'm going to have to either have to relay this to the Midnight Society, but I, you know, maybe I step away from there too. Just completely remove myself from the scene. It's what I need to do. I mean, I, right? Take all the time you need, says Layer Cake. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. He, so this is, this is obviously an edited down clip. I watched a longer version of it where he led up to this point talking about how he was just really burnt out, you know? Just like, you know, it's just, uh, who really burnt out. And basically, in hindsight, at the time when I saw this, I didn't even know. I heard murmurs of these allegations, but I saw this and I was like, oh yeah, he's burnt out. I understand, I get that. And now- as more and more things have come out and it's become a little bit more damning for him in any sort of feasible defense, I watch this and it's, in hindsight, it's interesting just to see him. He's basically, you have to, I mean, he's just folding. You have to fold the cards at this point. Give me back my duck! Don't be a pussy. God damn it. I, I'm telling you, it's fatigue. It's tired it's wanting to just kind of move away from the limelight <laughs> yeah ultimately i bet that's what it's about yeah you know what i mean champs damn now what i mean shit there's 50 million other streamers you can watch right now it's getting old yo what's getting old get the break respect it doc okay i appreciate that it's getting old you're not alone that's not very nice you don't like me it's time to drive into the sunset, says Swervin. Oof, man, I like your style. It might be time to drive in the sunset, champs. Mm. I appreciate all of you. Appreciate all the commitments, the recommitments. Please, do me a favor. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your week. And we'll see you soon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So I think that was him realizing. I don't even think at that moment he realized just how the gravity of the situation as the internet gets a hold of it. I mean, there's few things the internet likes more than dogpiling and destroying people in positions of power and fame and fortune. Um, and the easiest way, <laughs> the easiest way to give people a reason to absolutely fucking curb stomp you on the internet is to fuck around with a kid when you're an old man. I mean, there's just no, there's no worse offense. You know what I mean? And granted, like, is again, like there was no legal wrongdoing. You know, you could make the argument about like, and this was his argument in his long text response that happened after this stream that we just watched was essentially like there was nothing illegal that took place, right? And in my head, I'm like, 
brother, the law does not matter in the court of public opinion, okay? You're not denying slash admitting to inappropriately texting with a minor on Twitch whispers as a 40-year-old man? You're fucking cooked, dude. I liked this guy's content. I thought he was great. And I would... I didn't even know him, right? If I was a friend, obviously, you're going to look for a way to defend him or try to come up with a way. But, like, that's just a royal flush of fuck-ups. That is the the number one internet whoops-a-daisy, <laughs> okay? You know, it's one thing to fuck around and, like, get caught DMing or fucking with, like, a an OF chick as a married guy with a daughter. It's a whole nother category, to be sending messages like that to a minor. I don't fucking get it. I don't know. Like, there is no point in my life where it, I am a, 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 I'm like a, you know, I'm very fortunate. I'm very blessed. I also have a wife that I love and I have a son. Doc has a wife and a daughter that he, I'm sure, loves, you know, in spite of this behavior that is fucking terrible. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to pretend like there's not, there's, you know, I don't like everyone has temptations and all these things, but there's no universe. And I'm speaking just for me personally, where like, where you would entertain that scenario where it's like, I don't know, you get like, a, a, maybe someone reaches out and it's like this young chick and she's like, oh, doc, I love you. You really helped me when I'm down. Like you, you get messages, man, when you do stuff on the internet, you get people that appreciate you for making content, but like, there's never ever been a time where I'm like, yeah, let's take this conversation and get a little nasty with it. A, I don't have the desire to, I just, and, and B, even if I did have the desire or I was a little bit freaky or a little like flirting with the idea of being a scumbag and trying to be weird with other bitches behind my wife's back, I would like to think I at least have the presence of mind in the IQ level to not do it with a fucking teenage or a minor. You know what I mean? Like, I just can't. I, oh, it just, it, it, it blows my mind. It's so hard for me to wrap my head around. It truly is. Doc's official statement. Okay. This was after this like stream ending thing. This was received poorly from what I can tell. The Twitch ban, he titles it. Hey, I'd like to make a quick statement. Let's cut the fucking bullshit. As you know, there's no filter with me. Like, he, he comes out with the tough guy act right out of the gates, which I get it. He's like, to till the, till the bitter end, he's playing, you know, the character. Or, I mean, you should at least be playing Guy Beam, which is his name, which is an insane name, by the way. <laughs> side side Sidebar. Guy Beam, crazy name. Cool name, kind of, to be honest. But uh, maybe a little more tact would have been appreciated in this post anyways as you know there's no filter with me i've always been upfront and real with you guys on anything that i can be upfront about and i'm always willing to accept responsibility which is why i'm here now first and foremost i do want to apologize to everyone in my community as well as those close to me my team and everyone at midnight society game studio a lot of people have been left in the dark about what happened yesterday with midnight society and i and we made the painful decision collectively to have me step down so this is him obviously talking about the fact that he was let go. <laughs> he stepped down, right? Quote, unquote. I stepped down. No, you got you got fired because you got caught texting kids. Our team is full of incredibly talented and good people that have high career ambitions and families, and I never want to jeopardize the culture we have carefully crafted. Everyone has been wanting to know why I was banned from Twitch, but for reasons outside of my control, I was not allowed to say anything for the last several years. I'm going to call bullshit on that. Yeah, I'm absolutely going to call bullshit on that. The fucking case, the legal case was closed in 2022, my brother. That you probably had 2 years to say whatever the fuck you wanted to. But uh I'm going to I'm going to take I didn't want it to come out because I was sexting with a minor for 1000, Alex. Bing ding 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 ding, 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 ding daily double. Fuck out of here, dude. I was not allowed to say anything for the last several years. Okay, bro. Sure you weren't. Now that two former Twitch employees have publicly disclosed the accusations, I can tell you my side of the story regarding the ban. Were there Twitch whisper messages with an individual minor back in 2017? Question mark. The answer is yes. Okay. Were there real intentions behind these messages? The answer is absolutely not. 
These were casual, mutual conversations that sometimes leaned too much in the direction of being inappropriate, but nothing more. Like, what the fuck does that even mean, bro? How? Why did you even get to that point? That's like on to How to Catch a Predator with Chris Hansen back in the day. You you roll up, like Hansen comes out as the predator shows up to the fifteen year old's house. He's like, "Why don't you take a seat over there?" He sits down, and Hansen's like, "Why do you uh Why do you have a pack of condoms and a six pack of of, of Zima?" And the dude's like, "Well, I mean, we were just gonna watch TV. Like this was nothing sexual was gonna happen. We were just." Gonna, you know, like, what do you, so why do it in the first, like, what are you doing? Why do it in the first place? What the fuck is wrong with you? These were casual, mutual conversations that sometimes leaned too much in the direction of being inappropriate, but nothing more. What the fuck does that even mean? You're fucking 40, bro. Why are you having conversations that are casually leaning towards inappropriate with a fucking minor? What are you talking? There's no, I don't care if it's illegal or not. What the fuck are you doing? And that's his defense next. He goes, nothing illegal happened. Oh, okay. Oh, in that case. Oh, doc, you should have just said that. Well, as long as nothing illegal happened, yeah, keep on being fucking weird and raunchy with fucking 16-year-olds in the in the Twitch whispers. That's fine, you fucking moron. What? What the fuck? No pictures were shared. No crimes were committed. I never even met the individual. Okay. I went through a lengthy arbitration regarding a civil dispute with Twitch, and that case was resolved by a settlement. Let me be clear. It was not a criminal case against me, and no criminal charges have ever been brought against me. So he was, he was swinging for the fences, hoping that this idea that there were no criminal charges was going to somehow get people to be like, well, all right. <laughs> Okay, we'll give you another chance, Doc. As long as you weren't arrested, we don't care. <laughs> Unfortunately, no, has not gone, has not gone very well the last couple of days. Now, from a moral standpoint, I'll absolutely take responsibility. I should have never entertained these conversations to begin with. That's on me. Uh, you think? That's on me as a that's on me as an adult, a husband, and a father. It should have never happened. I get it. I'm not perfect, and I'll fucking own my shit. This was stupid. Oh, that's an understatement of the century, Doc. Now, with all that said, don't get it fucking mistaken. I've seen all the remarks and labels being thrown around so loosely. Social media is a destruction zone. I'm no fucking predator or pedophile. Are you kidding me? Anyone that truly knows me knows where I stand on those things and those types of people. Fuck that. That's a different level of disgust that I fucking hate even hearing about. Don't be labeling me as the worst of the worst with your exaggerations. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. So he goes from like, yes, I had inappropriate conversations with a minor, but it wasn't illegal, to also uh, predators, people that fuck with kids online, worst of the worst. Fuck that. That's gross. I hate these people. Crazy, crazy switch up. Like, I'm not saying that, like, listen, I'm not, I'm not a judge and jury. Like he could have been uh, caught in a moment of weakness and made the worst decision of his life. And he's not fucking out actively trying to hunt down kids, obviously. But man, what a fucking, what a fuck up. He goes on to say, but I think I've said what I need to say regarding the ban itself. That's it. That's why Twitch made the decision in 2020 to my team, community, industry, friends that have supported me. I apologize. I wish I could have said all this sooner. You guys have always showed me and my family love and support throughout all these years. We love you guys. Like you can't imagine. At the best community and circle, if any of this has made you uncomfortable, I get it. You don't have to support me anymore, but just know you have always been greatly appreciated. But trust me when I say this. To all my haters that live and breathe social media with zero real-life experience, I don't give a fuck about you. Well, Doc, I mean, <clears throat> I have quite a bit of real-life experience. I wouldn't even call myself a hater. I just think you're an absolute fucking idiot. I, I, like, I, there's, just no, there's just no other way to say it. You can see, you can call it disgusting. You can call it whatever you want, but I like I'm I'm a very um, frontal lobe thinker. Like I'm just it's to, I'm I'm a very logical thinker, right? So I try to take the emotion out of it and just think of like what are the motivations and reasons that lead someone to behave a particular way, and I cannot figure out what the fuck. What do you do? Like it can it has to be some sort of like mental disorder, right? You have to just 
be desperately insecure? Like, is that why you've become so successful? Because you have, like, you love this this adoration, this the love from these people on the internet, and you, all of a sudden, I just I don't get it. And I, <clears throat> I guess I don't need to. It is gross. It sucks. But above all, it just it's just stupid. You're an idiot. It makes no sense. Like, it's just so it's just so so dumb. Um, finally, if you're uncomfortable with this entire statement and think I'm a piece of shit, that's fine, but I'm not fucking going anywhere. I'm not the same guy that made this mistake all those years ago. I'm taking an extended vacation with my family as mentioned on stream and I'm coming back with a heavy weight off my shoulders. They want me to disappear. Yeah, fucking right. This tweet is 116 million views. Um, super viral. This is talk of the town. The responses are absolutely <laughs> insane. As you can imagine, some absolute banger responses in here. Oh, the, this is the part. This is the part that made it worse, dude. He edited the tweet, so he posted the original tweet. He posted and used the word "minor." He was like, "Yeah, I, were, were the Twitch me whisper messages with an individual minor back in 2017?" The answer is yes. He then edited it to take out the word "minor," and then obviously it's the internet. Like again, like you think no one's gonna notice that, dude? What the fuck? So he's getting shit on for it, and he edits the word minor back in. So he's clearly he's clearly dancing on eggshells right now. No idea how the fuck to handle this. Um, he tried the like kind of the hard nose, like yeah, I don't give a fuck, whatever. I'm not a creep, and, and I get it. Like I think if I was ever getting shit on for some dumb shit, I'd probably try to stand my ground too. If I if I truly felt like I was on the right, but it's it's hard to stand on some fucking hard nose shit when you're like the dude that's been texting with minors. Like that's, it's hard to be like, yeah, fuck my haters. I'm not that guy anymore. <laughs> okay. Ooh, hope not, <laughs> but, but maybe take a little more of a soft approach, bro. Like a little, a little more of like a man, I really fucked up and I hope you can forgive me. Eh, you know, like, like that's, that's a delicate one. You can't just come out and be like, Fuck my haters, dude. I stay texting minors and Twitch whispers. Interesting tone. So as you can imagine, he's been getting completely fucking lampooned on the internet. I mean, as the internet does. And we and we know this. Like, this is the type of thing that happens. And Doc knows this. He's seen this. He should have... Exp he, I think, like, he's probably subconsciously realized that this day would come over the course of the last four years, as he's been continuing to carry on with his business and carry the weight of this burden on his back. And the crazy part is like, like, you know, this guy's <clears throat> made plenty of money. He's not going to want for much. He's not going to be worried about how to pay rent next month. Right. He's doing okay. Um, he could probably ride off into the sunset. And be totally fine. Just ghost. Never come back to the internet. But if he has any plans to continue his online business and persona, it's, it, this is going to be a tough one to outrun. So obviously, this type of thing, Doc's, you know, he got dropped by Midnight Society, his partner slash, I think, business he was part owner in. Uh, he got dropped by 2K, Turtle Beach, the 49ers, and a bunch of... His streamer friends have spoken out. A couple of big names. I'm going to listen to some responses here. This is Nade Shot. Nade Shot is one of the OGs in the gaming space. A lot of you know him, owner of 100 Thieves. Um, if you don't know him, he's just a very successful OG uh, Call of Duty slash business owner. You know me. You guys know me for a long time. You know, obviously I have a relationship with Doc. Uh, played golf a lot the last year. Um, to that. come on, man. I mean, it's pretty much common sense how I feel about that. I've got a daughter now. It's like, I got people calling me out in my Twitter mentions like, yo, why don't you got your pitchfork out? Why aren't you, you know, if you don't come out right now and say how much you don't fucking like this guy anymore, you're a piece of shit. I'm like, dude, kind of an extension of the public outrage around situations like this, which we see all the time is. When someone fucks up, you know, people love to get the pitchforks and they love to eviscerate and they like to take it a step further and go around to anyone that is associated with this person or been friendly or been friends with this person 
and try and demand and force them to denounce them or make a statement or say something they want to hear. Like there's a weird element of it that like gives it like gives the general public this sense of entitlement and power that they can now kind of extort these rich, successful online influencers, you know? And I hate that part of it. That part of it sucks. Just personally, I think it's stupid. I think it's pathetic. Like, you know, let people do what they want. Like, obviously, these people that were friends with him, like, it's not, they're not guilty, you know? It's whatever. The guy's obviously affable and is, is crazy as to say. Like, the fact that he had probably the biggest fuck up you can imagine and is going through it right now, if you can put that aside, probably just a normal fun guy to be around, good friend. In a lot of ways, like these are just realistic things that are very probable. So this idea that like all these these audiences, these guys go around the discords are like, oh, let's let's go get Nade shot and force them to make a statement and make them deny. Let's go make fight. It's just fucking like get a life, bro. I really don't want to get into it. I don't think it it takes a rocket scientist to understand that I don't support talking to minors. I mean, it's okay to talk to minors, dude. Just don't make it sexual. Like, and I mean that like again. There's a time and a place. If you're, it, it's, you're probably better off just never even engaging in a one on one conversation with a minor on the internet if you're in a position of power and influence. That's just rule number one. <laughs> and I guess Nade Shot's just insinuating that we know the context here. <laughs> I really don't bring drama into this stream very often, man. And uh, I don't enjoy doing that. But for anybody to question how I feel, about another man's decisions, you know. If you really have to guess on how I feel about it, I don't think you you really need to be in this stream, bro. Point blank, period. Period. So, um, it's just crazy, brother. I just, I don't know, man. It's crazy. I have no desire to be involved. Like, you know, it's that's what I hate about the internet. It's like, bro somebody else makes a terrible decision and it's like yo if you don't fucking talk about it bro you're you're just as bad i'm like what um so we're gonna move past that if you're looking to get much out of me it ain't gonna happen um all in all bro i had a great 48 hours gentlemen yeah so pretty deflective and it's like uh, I wouldn't expect much else. Like it's not his responsibility to be judge and jury. And there's probably, there's a friendship there. Like they play golf together, right? You're golf buddies. I think you have to be very candid with the fact that I don't, <laughs> I think the decision that he made was stupid and terrible, but that's all I'll say about it. Like you don't need to fucking assuage people's fears and get into it. Like this wasn't you, man. I really don't think people should be required. You know, they can say what they want. I think if you're asked, you can be like, yeah, I think you made a dumb decision, but I don't think you need to be forced into talking. Uh, this is Ninja. So a couple of these responses I haven't seen yet. I haven't seen this response from Ninja. Um, I just want to touch on some things lately, guys. Obviously, there's been a lot of like drama that's been going on, uh, not involving me, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, and I'm just, I've just got two things to say, and then we're just going to move on and keep playing Fortnite. So this is crazy. The, the reason this is like, man, you're talking about these are all of the heaviest hitters in the entire streaming industry. Talk about a fucking shockwave, dude. Doc being one of the top ones, right? And they, obviously these guys are also friendly that like you, these are just millions and millions and millions of eyeballs. And, and it's such a weird ripple effect where Doc's fuck up now resonates and ripples into the lives of all these other people that have associated with him over the years and they now have to kind of answer to their audiences or you have to obviously address it. Like you don't, you don't have to, but it, it is the nature of the internet where it's like, you have to at least talk about the elephant in the room. You don't have to go into detail, but you have to make a statement on it. Uh, or else it's, you can't just continue streaming because like the reality is like what we do, or um, I say we, when I talk about, you know, streamers playing video games, me like commentating on things like making fun of shit like it's so unserious right so it's it's really difficult to just go on being unserious and trying to entertain when you like there's this very um heavy thing looming over you 
So it's like, you, that's why we're just, everyone has to kind of decide when's the right time to make the statement. And I'm just, this is interesting to me. Cause like I said, I haven't even seen these particular ones yet. So I'm kind of watching these live here. All right. Number one, anything involving a minor at all, no matter what it is, like is, is not okay. It's messed up and it's illegal and it's, it's pretty simple. So especially if you no, we, we we keep saying this, like, you mean sexually, right? Like, it's not illegal to talk to a minor. Like, you can go to a birthday party and talk to a 13-year-old kid and be a normal human being. Anything involving a minor that gets sexually inappropriate is what we're insinuating here, which is, like, I, I, I guess this isn't something you have to clarify because we all understand the context, but it's just interesting. It's, like, hey, the way it's, it's phrased. Up and it's illegal, and it's... It's pretty simple. So especially if you, all right, I'm not going to get too much into detail about that, but like, come on, it's, it's, it's a no brainer, right? That's number one. But, and number two with the whole doc situation and, um, and just what's been released these last two days, like, here's what I'll, I'll point out for now. And that is, if you guys don't know, Midnight Society, who, which is the game that doc helped build right and create and he was a part of the company did their own investigative research behind the scenes i didn't know that that's interesting right? and found enough right found enough evidence to let him go from the company right not like not administrative leave not we'll address this later like let him go after doing their own research <laughs> And I, I actually want to give credit to Midnight Society for doing that. You know, that I, I believe initially, obviously, would, when these allegations came out, they were like, well, we're obviously not going to just go off of other people's word, but they spent resources to verify the claims, essentially, and then let him go, which essentially it was like, clearly they found that the claims were valid. Right, and after doing their own in internal investigation behind the scenes. So, like... If that's not enough, right, evidence or, or, or enough to, like, they found something is what I'm trying to say, okay? Now, let's, like, I've, I've, I've seen a bunch of clips out there. I've seen a bunch of stuff from XQC, like, who said apparently there's more stuff coming out. So until then, it's only been two days into the situation. So let's just wait until we see more. But, like, that's all I have to say. Yeah, saying I didn't do anything illegal or, like, there was no wrongdoing – I mean, a lawsuit at the end of the day, not a lawsuit, but a settlement, right? Because there's talks about a settlement. A settlement, no matter what it looks like publicly, it usually means someone did something, right? <laughs> or there was some truth True. to some, enough truth. Right? You, you, you settle to cover things up. You settle to not let things get out there. Mm. All right? So just do your own research. Look. But unfortunately, when your whole career is being somebody on the internet, <laughs> you're... <laughs> You can only settle for so long until those things come out anyways. Stuff up and and just let's just keep on waiting for, for some more stuff. Um, sorry, more evidence um, moving on in the future. But done with the drama. I didn't even want to talk about this because I, I hate stuff like this. Dude, it's so – like this is every fucking streamer. Like, uh, you know, like it's such a ubiquitous – statement you know i just i don't i just don't want to talk about the drama i didn't even i didn't even want to talk about this i would love to see a streamer just make a very concise reasoned statement like hey i know i've i've been friends with doc over the years i thought he was a pretty cool guy we played a lot of games together um for what i can tell he made a really fucked up decision did some dumb shit so um if everything that's coming out is correct i i don't i probably won't be associating with him that much anymore just because uh, i don't agree with it and um you know, Godspeed. See you later. On to the games. It's just like, it's weird to see, you know, some of these guys that have so much power and money and influence in these positions of um, of great influence, they get so dodgy and, and uncomfortable around talking about anything mildly serious, which I understand. I mean, when your whole life is playing a fucking kid's game, making millions of dollars, it's difficult to talk about, you know, an adult man fucking sexting with a, a a teenager or whatever but uh well ninja's never been that well spoken anyway so i don't know what i expected but you know as being in the community like a leader of the community and, and same with the doc being a leader of the community like i had to touch on it that's my two cents don't fucking text minors or do any of that shit it shouldn't be that well great advice ninja thank you difficult um agree 
it is not difficult to not text minors. I'm going to be honest with you. I've lived, I'm almost 40 now, 39. I would say one of the easiest things in my life ever has been just not texting minors. (laughs) I can't think of anything, anything easier, to be honest. (laughs) It's fucking just be a good person, man, and be a leader in the community. I just, I don't want to talk about this. I hate talking about this. You know, I don't like drama in my stream, but just, but just like don't text minors, you know, like whatever. All right, that was a good one. Z Laner Doc's longtime COD duo partner. Oh, I don't even know who this dude is, but let's hear what he has to say. Um, um, oh, this dude's fucking torn everyone, up. Uh, just make- oh my God, he's quivering. He did two ums with multiple quivers in the first three seconds. I'm fucking dead, dude. Get a fucking pair. Just talk like, just talk like a normal human, dude. In this video, uh, due to the fact that a... A lot of people obviously wondering what my thoughts are on the doc situation. Um, People speculating what my silence uh, over the last few days means. I want to start by saying the silence has been nothing more than probably what it's been for uh, a lot of people. Uh, over the last few days, it's been pretty devastating. Processing. Uh, devastating news. Just hard to come to grips with. You know, I do, <clears throat> I wonder, and I, I hate to pause this video because the quivering is, is is superb, but I do wonder a lot of these people that were close to him, like if he was able to keep every single one of them in the dark, you know, like to the general public, it's like, yeah, we don't know why Doc got banned. You're telling me his closest friends and confidants and employees, you're telling me he didn't know? He's like, sorry, I'm legally bound. I can't say anything. Was there nobody that knew? I imagine uh, some of these motherfuckers knew what the speculation was, but it was like, hey, you know, there was no legal proceedings. There was no legal case. I'm not arrested. I'm not in trouble legally. And so, you know, the ship keeps on moving. We just keep our mouth shut. And now that it comes out, it's like, well, it's forced statement time. I'm not saying that this guy, I'm not saying that this guy specifically knew or that Ninja knew, but there is definitely some people in the inner circle that had to have known. Like you can't be like when you work with people closely and become intertwined in their life and a big part, you're not going to let them be like, yep, can't tell. Like unless he played, unless he totally played dumb. But that wouldn't even make sense either. So there was de- there had to have been like an inner circle that knew why the Twitch ban happened. And not only that, but around the, the legal proceedings, I mean, he, he was in a year-long legal battle with Twitch over it. So like there was a lot of people that knew this. And so this is honestly, I'm, I'm quite frankly impressed at how long this stayed under wraps from the general public. Because obviously there was a, a lot of people that knew about what the this controversy was about and the fact that he was able to go four years afterwards and continue with his career before having to face the music is impressive so let's continue with the scene later here um, for looks- doc i hope this is a dark dark part of his past i can't i can't uh, I hope he learns from the situation um, and it never happens again. A full grown man oh, there he goes. messaging a minor is unacceptable. Sexually. No no one no one has the balls to say it, right? A full grown man being sexually explicit with a minor. That's unacceptable. Uh, and I can't stand by that. Got him. Thank you, Z-Laner, for that fucking quiver fest. I mean, his voice. Uh, yeah, dark. I hope this was a dark, dark part of his past. past. <laughs> Sorry. I shouldn't be making light of the situation. I'm not making light of the situation. I'm just... Well, I guess the Jamesons are starting to hit, and you know what? 
<laughs> that was that was funny. Tim the Tap Man comments. All right, he didn't make a video. I'm curious about this because I've, I've followed Tim for a long time. Oh, he did make a wow. video. Here we this go. Is, this is huge. Absolutely insane, bro. Uh, I haven't seen this yet, so this is look. <laughs> this is why I love sometimes having Jordan help me because I get to kind of live enjoy these things for the first time while chatting to you guys via microphone and camera. Um, this is absolutely insane, bro. It's so insane. Fucking Texas and Miners is the fucking most insane thing. It's fucking crazy insane. This is wild. Absolutely insane, bro. Everything I'm seeing. I have known Doc for a while now. We've played games for years. And um, seeing everything that is spiraling right now is a uh, very difficult thing for me personally. And I'm sure for a lot of y'all out there. I think for me, I know a lot of you are asking, Tim, what are you feeling? Tim, what are you feeling? My bottom line, I think, is if what he is saying where he said that he was messaging a minor and it would sometimes lead to teeter on inappropriate, <laughs> if he knew that was a minor and those were the messages being sent, I cannot support that. I'm so sorry to laugh. Like, just the way it was phrased. Like, you would have thought he would say, like, I cannot continue my relationship with the doc. But it was like, I cannot support that. Like, yeah, no shit, Tim. Like, I've got, like nobody can support a 40-year-old man sexually being sexually suggestive with a minor in some sort of whisper product. Um. I will say, like, Tim at least is, like, less quivery. Like, this I like. This is why I like Tim, because it's like, at least he's talking like a normal human being. Like, just get it out there. I cannot support that. I know that he means, like, that's probably, like, a less uh, aggressive way of saying I kind of have to sever my relationship with Doc moving forward if these things are true. Um. It just sounded funny being like, I, like this whole lead up to like, I cannot support sexting minors. And those were the messages being sent. Yeah. I cannot support, support, support that. that. Yeah. Neither can I, Tim. Neither I can't. Can I. I appreciate y'all. I am, this is beating me up, but this is. Unfortunate to say the least. This is awful. So appreciate you guys. Thank you for the love you give. And uh, I'll see y'all soon, man. Yeah, good. So I liked him. I mean, I, I've always enjoyed his, I've always just enjoyed his demeanor in many different ways. I've seen a lot of clips of him and Doc over the years. Very funny demeanor together. A lot of these guys, Tim, Doc. Nick. I'm laughing at little things that are unrelated to the core issue we're talking about here. Um, but I, I do, I have a, a, a level of empathy and sympathy for these, these dudes that have been friends with this guy just because there is probably a, like this feeling of <clears throat> like, it's weird on the internet, man, when your whole life's lived online and you're all these, like the, these online relationships are followed by millions of people. It's just a different world. Mm. And so you're now mourning the loss of a friend, which, you know, that outside of the internet, they were probably genuine friends, but then online, you have to show up for the camera and be like, this is how I'm feeling, you know? So while you're dealing with the personal side of it, where you're like, maybe mourning the loss of this friendship that you enjoyed, because there was kind of this thing going on in the background that you weren't aware of, you now have to figure out how to phrase that or explain it to all these millions of adoring fans that follow you. It's an interesting uh, 
It's an interesting dynamic. This is a statement from a guy named Robert Bowling. He's the studio head at Midnight Society. He goes, this is a statement for me personally. It does not reflect any of my companies and has not gone through any legal or PR approvals. He says, if you inappropriately message a minor, I cannot work with you, period. I promised to only act on facts, and I did. These things have all slowly matriculated. Like initially it was like, oh, well, it's kind of hearsay. We don't know. And then Midnight Society let the doc go. And then Doc came out and finally was like, you know, he gave the statement. Did I inappropriately talk with a minor? Yes, I did. And then people were like, there's people to their dying breath trying to defend this man. And listen, like, I love to play devil's advocate on the internet, especially around like allegations around inappropriate behavior, because I think the internet is very, very eager to label people predators or pedos or whatever in the, you know, the years with me too movements and just men in general being scared to make any sort of advance or talk to women at all, because there was like this possible, this possibility of some sort of repercussions for what would be considered just like normal fl flirtatious behavior, maybe 15 to 20 years ago. Right. So I like to, I don't, I'm never the one to, to kind of throw the first stone or point fingers and be like, Ugh. so I've just kind of sat around and watched this thing come out. But as more information has come out and doc has come out and admitted, I like, what do you say? Like, I don't that you can't, I, that you can't play devil's advocate anymore. And the thing I saw most recently, as more information continues to come out, this tweet says, uh, Dr. Disrespect has now confirmed, this was from the 27th, this was from yesterday, uh, he is now conf was now confirmed in an article by Slasher and the Rolling Stone to have sent sexually graphic messages to a minor he knew to be underage. He was made aware of the individual being underage and indicated it was not a problem he was not offered a contract at YouTube due to the circumstances of the Twitch ban, which YouTube was informed about. So that's another that's another huge piece was like, did he know she was a minor? This uh, apparently this article suggests that he was made aware of the individual being underage and he indicated it was not a problem. That that's a whole that's like another layer. <laughs> that's like it just gets, it's just getting worse and worse. A statement from Ryan, or a response to this tweet from Ryan Watt, who is the former, or I think he's the he was the former head of YouTube Gaming at the time. He said it was a rumor circulating in the industry, and no evidence was provided at all. So we passed on doing a deal. We never promoted him either, which pissed him off. You can't demonetize the platform without evidence. Now they can act. So he was basically saying we didn't have evidence. We heard the rumors, so we didn't offer him a deal. We didn't promote him. He still did very well on YouTube just because he has such a large audience and a loyal fan base. Um, but now I'm curious, we, essentially Ryan saying now, you know, now they can act, meaning now that there's evidence or there's admission of guilt around this particular thing, even if there's no legal case, YouTube could make the case that it's against their TOS or whatever the fuck in in uh, base you know maybe deplatform him if he even if he wanted to come back after his extended vacation with his family I, I don't know there was another tweet apparently by Tifu which is if you guys know who Tifu is he's another huge um streamer Fortnite player he says i mean the seal has been broken why stop now put it all out there just protect the information of the person he was whispering with he's basically urging twitch to release the whispers doctor disrespect was banned for this is kind of the next big thing Right. So there's all this speculation. This stuff finally comes out. It's hearsay. Like, obviously, some people have seen it. Twitch, like, there's there's a group of people who have seen the messages. And you know that people are thirsty. They are hungry for this type of shit. Because as fucked up as it is, this is a form of entertainment, this type of drama. Drama is entertaining. It's, a, it's an entire industry that's worth billions of dollars. So... It will these messages ever get released? I don't know, but if they do, I man, I, and you know, I, I sit here as a grown ass man, like with no vested interest. I'm talking about it because I think it's it's relevant to my industry and just online entertainment in general. And I'm processing it because I just I can't understand why someone would be so fucking knob headed to do something this stupid. But we for some reason see this shit all the time. Um, 
But yeah, if those messages came out, I'd be the first one to click them. See what that motherfucker was saying. You know, it is what it is. I don't know that they will, but who knows? Phase Banks. I don't know if you know who Phase Banks is owner owner of Phase Clan, originating founding father slash new re restructured it recently and fired everybody, and he's kind of trying to rebuild it from the ground up. He. He says, Dr. Disrespect, abandon the pers- abandon the persona entirely, drop the act and ditch the costume, fire up the stream and play dumb, pretend like you have nothing to do with the doc character and agree with the general consensus that he's a creep. Call yourself Mr. Respect. <laughs> it's your only play. And there's a picture, it's like an AI picture of the doc wearing like uh, nerd glasses and a suit and tie with a nice little overcoat. Funny tweet. Could work. Could work. A tweet that was released that has, it's very long, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's information about, more information about allegedly what could have happened between these whispers between Guy slash Doc Disrespect and the 17-year-old on Twitch, the age of which was not known at the time, they're saying, um, they're saying the message were in relation, the messages were in relation to how, you know, how to scale new channels and using tried and true tested methods and Talking about behind the scenes, there being a service that was offered by members of the Dr. Disrespect team under a different brand name, and the brand name used could be interpreted many ways. The transcript, um, the transcripts are part of the court proceedings and as outlined, show no wrongdoing nor illegality. So this is the thing, like, if there's any, I honestly think that if there's any hope for Doc to have any sort of vindication is to release, is to release the transcripts. If there is, if there was some sort of miscommunication or something, Again, there's like this is a, a multi-page document, but the the general consensus is that you know it suggests that Doc may not be revealing all the info because he legally cannot yet, and there's still more to be seen. Which I would think that after the the Twitch proceedings ended in 2022, maybe he he could, but I don't know if there's a continued legal proceeding for some other reason. It also brings up the point that the Doc won money from the settlement with Twitch. And it's hard to think that Twitch would willingly pay a large sum of money to someone they believe is a pedo or texting minors or whatever. And no wrongdoing was admitted from either party. Um, So listen, like, I know that the internet is good at bandwagoning and jumping on with the pitchforks, right? And for what it's worth, like in this case, there's not many cases where the person that is under the microscope is like, hey, yeah, I did that. I was texting with a minor and sometimes they leaned uh, someone inappropriate, but like that leaves so much room for speculation, right? So if he can't legally release those messages, I think like at this point, it's like, man, what do you have to lose? Because like anytime that something like that is brought, like, it's like, hey, you're 40 and you've had inappropriate messages with a 17 year old. That That's the general consensus everyone's going to assume the worst, right? So your only recourse now would be to, even if there is some weird shit, maybe release, if you can somehow get these whispers released and add some context to it, where it's like, hey, we were, there was pages and pages of us talking about this thing, or I, I, don't, I don't even know, like something, some sort of Hail Mary where it's like, it's not what you think it is, It's just my demeanor to be a little bit crass and inappropriate, and I shouldn't have been with this girl, but it wasn't me, like, clearly courting her or trying to be strictly crass with no other context or reasoning behind it. I I don't know. know. I'm just trying to see this from another perspective, but it's certainly certainly difficult to um, at this point in time, but... You know, maybe time will tell. I think he's probably going to be off the internet for a while. And, you know, the reality is, you know, people are going to, f- I, I guess people won't forget, but two, three weeks, everyone will be on to the next thing. Like, this is huge fucking news, but that's the nature of the news cycle. And that's fine. And Doc can live happily ever after with his wife and daughter if he wants to. And no big deal. If he does try to come back to YouTube, curious to see how that goes, if YouTube's going to do anything. And I will be curious to see if, any more context comes out aside from, you know, just what people are whispering and talking about. Um, because so far there's really been nothing, including doc statements that have been 
even the least bit vindicating. And that's not good because the internet's always going to assume the worst. There was a tweet from this girl named Yuki on the 25th that says, the problem with these is if Doc stays quiet, he looks guilty. If he defends himself, people are going to say, why are you fighting so hard? What are you hiding? We need proof. That's it, plain and simple. Um, yeah, I mean, this was on the 25th. It's been a couple of days since then. And I think a little more information has been released that, and none of it's been good. So... So I think in time we'll tell, like I, I, there was part of me early on, it was like, I was waiting for the other shoe to drop or it would be like, Hey, it's not what you think it is. Like there was these, the, there was this kind of correspondence and there were some things that were said, but it was in a different context. It wasn't whatever, which could still be the case. I don't know, but I'm going to need to see, uh, something, something that suggests that you weren't just being explicitly raunchy on purpose uh, with a minor. So I don't know. It is, it is, it's been crazy to see the shockwave though, obviously when this happens and all of the biggest streamers on the planet have to make a statement, it's like, everyone's going to be talking about all the news stations, all the drama channels. Very interesting. <clears throat> just tragic to see. I mean, listen, the easiest way to avoid all of this would just be to have not done anything inappropriate. You know, I'm thinking again, back to doc's statement and it's like, he was, like, he clearly admitted to being inappropriate because even after the whole thing, like, oh, it wasn't illegal and I'm not a predator, he was like, now from a moral standpoint, I have to deal with that. I made some dumb decisions. It's like, so so he's admitting to being in it. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I just fucking, I, the, the, the overreaching <laughs> uh, theme to this whole thing for me is what the fuck? I just don't understand. And I'm not saying that like it's it's appropriate or okay for people that don't have a lot to lose or just people in general to be creepy and disgusting because that shit happens all the time. That's a whole nother rabbit hole. But when you're a man in a position of influence with power and money and, and adoring fans, like you have to be held to a higher standard, I guess. I mean, you just are in general. And that being said, like you, you have to be self-aware enough to know that to be like okay if there are messages on the internet whether or not it's in a whisper or in a dm like once it's on the internet it is forever it does not matter so you know in your head if i'm talking to this person who is a young female even if it's about it could be about something completely innocuous and fine make it quick be done with it but you never even entertain the option of there being any sort of inappropriate messages or behavior. That's like, that's fucking rule number one. It just, it just makes no sense from a logical standpoint. So, um, but I guess, you know, some levels of perversion, excuse me, some levels of perversion might not be judici judiciated by logic. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'll be curious to see where this thing goes, if any more information comes out. Um, but in the meantime, it's just sad to see because, you know, this was a a revolutionary in the industry, a, a, a titan of entertainment. And tough to see him go down, like, in such a fucking shitty way, you know? But if everything we've seen so far stands on its own two legs, then... That's, he's just going to be lying in the bed he's made. And that's, that's how it goes. So I'm curious, uh, what you guys think about the situation? Um, I know so it's, it, this is a podcast, but it is a video as well. You can leave a comment below if you're listening, just talk out loud in your car <laughs> to yourself about it. I'll manifest it. I'll hear it. I promise. <laughs> I appreciate, uh, Every single one of you, as always, for tuning in. For this different type of content than you're used to from Leon Lush, man, it's just fucking, it's good to be chilling here. And I appreciate you listening. We'll talk to you in the next episode of Decently Indecent. Appreciate you. Peace.